Hey, sugar bear. Oh, no! Welcome to Never Solved, an investigative podcast that digs deep into the bowels of crime to get to the bare bones of murder. murder, murder. I'm your host, Todd Barnett, and with me in the studio today is James Poorly. Hello. You can subscribe to our podcast for weekly updates on all types of murder. I am so excited for this week's case, Todd. Me too. As soon as I heard about this case, a chill crept up the back of my legs and didn't stop until it reached deep deep into my gooch. Yes, listeners, today you are in for a treat as we investigate the case of the Milwaukee Manhandler. I was so excited that I just had to go with you to investigate. So let the manhandling begin. The air was crisp as we stepped off the plane, and there was a sense of foreboding on the ground. This was a town that had stood witness to disturbing events. Events that affected the people that live here. Events they would never forget. The crime of manhandling was not taken seriously by police until 2007, when Ben Quarterly, a district attorney, was himself manhandled by then police chief John Wright. The case drew national attention, and some say inspired a spate of copycat handling across the state. One such case took place over a baking hot winter in Milwaukee and centered around a place known to the locals as Betty's Bar. So, you were here back in 2010. Can you tell us what you saw? Nobody really saw anything. It was more like a feeling. A feeling? Like, uh, an atmosphere? No, like a firm grip on the ass cheek, or a tap on the nutsack. I could say nutsack, right? This is Bill Saunders, a local worker in Milwaukee's largest lumber yard. He's a regular of Betty's Bar. Known to the locals as Wild Bill on account of his getting drunk and doing party tricks with his chainsaw, he's the last person you'd expect to be manhandled. Nevertheless, handled he was. And you didn't see who it was? By then, we didn't really quite believe what was happening. Uh, if a fellow rubbed up against another fellow, some kind of misunderstanding was assumed. Nobody thought manhandling was a crime back then. It just wasn't something that happened. But then things took a serious turn when local tramp, Seth Shelby, was found naked behind Betty's bar with a carrot up his ass. Name's Sash, but they call me Trash. Because I live in the garbage back here. Isn't that a little insulting? It's more dehumanizing, but then... I do live in a pile of trash, so what do I expect? So what happened on the night you were handled? I don't really remember anything. I was blind drunk, but there was a guy in the bar that I'd never seen before. Funny looking, like he shaved every day. That's funny? He's around these parts. And you gave the police this description? The law don't want to know nothing from me. I'm just a piece of shit on this shoe. I was the first victim of the handler. And nobody gave a bull crap, because I'm homeless and I ain't a contributing member of society. I asked local police chief Dirk Duncan about this, a man with no sympathy for the plight of the homeless. Do you know how many people we find naked out the back of bars, eh? Even sodomy with a carrot ain't that unusual down here, eh? But when we found out it was just old trash Shelby there. Sash. What are you, one of them grammar Nazis? 
as I will see him real quick. When the victim's a tramp, nobody cares. It doesn't help that he's known as Trash, either, I suppose. He could have been called Tinkerbell for all I care. You find a tramp with a carrot in his rectum, but naked, in the middle of a freezing hot winter? Freezing hot? You ain't never been in a real winter if you ain't never been freezing hot. Anyway, finding Trash like that there, that's a Pandora's box nobody wanted to open, eh? But open it, they would. And as more victims began piling up, the Milwaukee police would have to stare down the fact that they had a serial manhandler on their hands. You are listening to Never Solved, an investigative podcast about the most heinous crimes we will never find answers for. And now, back to crime. We started to suspect we had a real serial handler on our hands. We know this stuff happens to women all the time, but to a man? That's unheard of. Something had to be done, eh? So when was it you started to pay attention to what was really going on? We were always paying attention, but we started to care when old poor Hal Clement got handled. Hal got handled the hardest. Hal is a local drunk, but he has a house up on 22nd Street, so the police immediately took him more seriously than Sash. Hey. Put his hands on my thighs and, and worked his way up towards my lower nut sack. And did he stop there? Hell no. He didn't stop till he reached the back of my gooch. I, I never felt so uncomfortably good in my entire life. Chief Duncombe told us you failed to give a description of the man. How come you couldn't identify him? I was already drunk of my own accord. Then he drunk me with about ten double whiskeys. I don't remember nothing. Was that the end of it? I wish. Then he pulled out something hard and an orange. A carrot? Could have been, but I can't say for sure. And then he started massaging me with it. Down the back of my spine and up my... Up my... It's all right. Take your time. My dirt. I'm sorry. I think I'm going to have to stop. Unfortunately, the manhandler didn't, for a long time. And it was Hal's description of the word massage that would lead Chief Duncombe and his men to their first suspect. Our Rex Wrangler lived in Wisconsin for about seven years. He was a local masseuse working out of a mall. Obviously, he got a lot of practice rubbing people's naked bodies. But I reckon he needed something more, eh? You see, in the massage parlor, he always had consent. His clients were all male, is that right? He gave special discounts to men. Another reason we took a close look at him. Most male masseuses have a few female clients for morale. You know, it keeps the job more interesting. I mean, they pretend not to care, but they like it. Everybody knows their game. Just like gynecologists. Ever notice how most of them are men? What, you think they all have a purely scientific interest in pussy, eh? Anyway, eh? Rex Lunt is trained in Japan from the masters. Oh, you mean Japan's master masseuses? Master pervert! He would ride the Tokyo trains just rubbing against unsuspecting salarymen. And if he ever got caught, he would pass it off as cultural confusion. So anyway, eh? When I was in Betty's bar doing a bit of canvassing, and I saw Rex there, I went to question him. He seemed normal, but when I went to walk away, I felt a gentle caress against one of my buttocks. The kind of caress only practice can produce. So you caught him, red-handed? That's the thing. I turned, and he was 20 feet across the bar. The hardest thing I ever saw, eh? Whether Rex Rexler was the right guy or not, Betty's bar was clearly the handler's hunting ground. We talked to the owner, Betty herself, to see if she could put a finger on just who this handler might be. I ain't got no time for them queers. The first thing you'll notice about Betty is that she's a monstrous homophobe. I ain't having none of that in my bar. 
Well, ha, just the other day I threw two dudes out for ramming each other in the cubicles. I will not have this bar turn into Sodom and Gomorrah. That aside, do you have any suspicions of who the handler could be? You men are so predictable with your big theories and the like. I told that police chief on day one the child should be out there looking for a woman. A female? Manhandler? That's right. Gotta be a woman. Too smart to be a man. She's choosing the victims carefully, plying them with liquor, and just handling away till a heavy bitty heart's content. Do you know who it could be? Only a few females come in here on the regular. It's the same with most gate bars. The hell you say? My bar ain't gay. It's full to the brim of hard working, hard drinking, fun time loving men. That's all. If you say so. So do you have any names? Well, if I had to guess, I'd say it'd be either Laura McMurphy or Shelly Byer. Them hoes ain't got no morals. Despite her self-denial that she runs a gay bar, Betty's name's checked out with the local police. But Chief Duncombe denied that the handler could be a female. In all my years of chiefing here, there have only been a few women who were carrying out heinous crimes. We had Rose Anchor back in 76, who gassed 300 cats and dogs. She had an aversion to pet hair. And Shelley Brains, who took her smoothie maker to her husband's face in 08. So, even with all those heinous crimes being committed, you still don't think that a woman is capable of handling a man? Never said they weren't capable, eh? But the motivations just aren't there. Think about it. Men grow up because they want to assert their dominance and do what they know they shouldn't. But women? Hell, a woman can walk up to a dude in broad daylight and grab his junk and nobody would bat an eyelid. It'd be a victimless crime, eh? The, the man would be the victim. Are you soft? Do you know how many times I've tried to get a woman to grab my junk? Without considerable effort, it just does not happen. So with the local bar women ruled out of the equation, police returned to look at Rex Wrangler. But Sash isn't convinced. Well, I was pretty conked out at the time, but I remember feeling a certain gentleness as the carrot was slipped inside me. I'm sure it had to be a feminine touch, but what do I know? I'm just a piece of garbage. So, who was the man you remembered seeing in the bar that night? Just some guy. Although, thinking about it, could have been a woman. You know, what with the way women are cutting their hair these days. To be honest, I don't put much weight on my own testimony. I'm quite unreliable. My brain is addled from years of hard liquor and sleeping rough amongst the rodents. With the police refusing to look into women at the bar, and Rex ruled out on the account of his death in 2010, everyone in the town was living in a state of perpetual confusion as just to who this serial handler of men could be. But then, perhaps the most dramatic event occurred just last year. This event would lead police to within a sniff of the handler's identity. Well, I'd never seen him in the bar before, but... I swear I recognized his face from somewhere. Then what happened, happened. The way locals in the bar described this event was like it happened all at once, like a flash of lightning. It was like a flash of lightning. About ten or twelve men stood up all at once and looked about themselves. I recognized that look from my own troubled face as I gazed in the mirror each morning after my own handling. Somehow all them men have been touched simultaneously in the sensitives. That's impossible. Unless there was more than one handler. The men in Betsy's bar that night seemed to have a collective experience, eh? Now I'm not a superstitious person, so I don't go in for the fact that this was some kind of hodgemacallie, malevolent spirit. No, I think we have a cult brewing. The handling was spreading? That's right, eh? Things were spiraling out of control. But even I didn't see what was coming next. 
One night, exactly a week after the collective handling, Betty's bar burnt to the ground. No one knows who lit the fire, but Sash has a theory. I reckon it was the strange fella I saw in the bar the night of the carrot incident. I saw him again the night of the mass handling. He was sat at the back of the bar in the shadows, and I swear I'd seen him somewhere before. And that is when I recognized his face. It was none other than Macho Man Randy Savage. The, the wrestler? One and the same. Who else would have that much experience handling men? Made perfect sense to me. I, I hate to tell you, Sash, but uh, Macho Man Randy Savage passed away about ten years ago. What? No word of a lie? Yeah, it's, it's been about a decade. I'm such a drunk. Such a scoundrel. That's a shame. I really like that guy. A real entertainer. Well, then I guess I really have no clue who the handler could be. And with that, our last lead dried up. We said our goodbyes to the folks of Manitoba, Milwaukee, and went back to our studio in New York. only to receive a strange answer phone message a week later from an unknown caller with a female voice. I know who did them men handlings, but I ain't never gonna tell you, yuppie pigs. The groping ain't gonna stop. Ain't never gonna stop until women get some goddamn respect around here. The message seemed to hint that the caller at least suspected who may have been handling the men of Manitoba, uh, Milwaukee. But she left no name and no contact information. And I just now deleted the message by accident, so we can't even send it to the police. I guess we will never know who the handler was. Rex Wrangler? Moira McMurphy? Or Shirley Breer? Some group of bitter women intent on revenge? A ghost? Could it even be Chief Duncan himself? who seems to have an aversion to look in areas he isn't entirely comfortable with. I guess we'll just never know. That's right, James. And that's why this case was the perfect addition to our collection of never solved mysteries. But if today's episode has one takeaway, perhaps it's this. If you visit Manitoba, Milwaukee, and should you find yourself at a local bar called Betty's, watch out for carrots. This has been Never Solved. I've been James Pooley. And I've been Todd Barnett. And we hope you've enjoyed not finding out who handled the men of Milwaukee as much as we have. Join us next time when we won't find out who strangled the Tennessee Ten. <laughs>